Hello students, welcome to the session of Is Matter Around Us Pure? In this session, we are going to discuss about the separation of constituents of mixture. See, in mixture, the components or the constituents do not react with each other or they do not combine chemically. Right? So, they have their own properties, they retain their properties. In the mixtures, you can identify the constituents. There is a barrier, a set barrier is there in between the constituents in case of heterogeneous mixtures. So we can separate the constituents of mixtures, that is the homogeneous as well as heterogeneous, by physical methods of separation. We will be discussing these methods of separation in this session and also the application of these methods in our day-to-day -day life for the separation of constituents. So let's start our session. Mixtures are formed by mixing of pure substances, the elements and compounds. This you all know. The constituents of mixture do not react. And also the constituents show their characteristic properties in the mixture. Right? That is they retain their properties. Unlike compounds, which are formed by the reaction of elements. Right? Now compound is a pure substance. So, compound is formed by the reaction of the elements and a compound has got different, altogether different properties from the elements. In case of mixture, say air is a mixture. It is a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and many other gases. But these gases, they retain their properties. They do not combine chemically. Now, these gases can be separated from air by physical methods of separation. So there are many uh, techniques available for the separation of constituents of mixture. Now the methods of separation of constituents from a mixture depends upon what? The type of mixture, whether it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. In homogeneous mixtures, what is happening? It is a mixture of two miscible liquids, say water and milk. It is a homogeneous mixture. A solid and liquid, that is, say, salt and water. So these are homogeneous mixtures. And heterogeneous means the solution of two immiscible liquids, like oil and water, or the suspension of sand in water. This is also what? Heterogeneous. The process of separation or the method which can be utilized for the separation of constituents depends upon what? Depends upon the nature. Depends upon the type of mixture, whether it's homogeneous or it's heterogeneous. The nature of the substances present in the mixture and also the nature. Whether the substances are volatile or non-volatile. Volatile is what? The substances which change from the liquid state to the vapor state are volatile say and uh, non-volatile the ones uh, which cannot change from a, a liquid to the vapor state right which do not come out as vapors or do not change into the gaseous state right magnetic non-magnetic so depending upon the nature of the substances present the method is employed we will be first discussing about separation of constituents from a heterogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixtures, they are comparatively easy to separate. Why? Because the different constituents can be easily identified. Remember this word, easily identified. The constituents can be easily identified and also have different physical properties. Say a mixture of sand and pebbles. That can be easily identified, right? And also having the different shapes. What are physical properties? The, sh the shape, size, the weight, they are all physical properties. So they have got different physical properties. The first one is, the set, uh, these are the methods. So method uh, first is what? Sedimentation followed by decantation and filtration. That is, first the mixture is allowed to settle down, that is sediment. Then it is decanted and then filtered. 
it is a very it is a very common process and this you would have uh, studied or uh, in your grade 6 or 7th also i'll just illustrate it with the help of a diagram the separation of sand from the mixture of sand and water see what is done here is the mixture of sand and water is allowed to stand right sand being heavier in weight it settles down at the bottom then the mixture is decanted slowly Say washing of, uh, you must have seen this process at your home also. Washing of pulses or uh, washing of uh, wheat. That is also sedimentation and decantation. Washing of rice before cooking. Say rice is just washed with water. It is kept, it is, uh, kept as such undisturbed for few minutes. All the dirt or the husk, whatever is there, it comes up and the water is then decanted. Right. In this case, sand being heavier settles down. Right. Now the water we can pour out. So we can get the clear water. In this also there are few, um, there are minute particles of sand or dirt that can be removed by filtration. How? By using a filter paper. What is a filter paper? It's just a paper with small, small pores. You must have heard about what Watman filter paper 4, 3, 1. So through these pores, these small, small particles cannot pass. These small impurities which are present, only water can pass through. So what will be held in this filter paper will be the impurity. See, this is filtration. This is the filter paper and that uh, water which is uh, being decanted is passed through this filter paper. So, in the beaker, the filtrate or the water is collected. And now this is what? This is the clear water. This is a very, very simple process. There are many other processes also by which a heterogeneous mixture can be separated. See, one more example is the suspension of calcium carbonate and water. That can be also separated by sedimentation, decantation and filtration. See students, there are three test tubes over here. This is lime water, right? Lime water is basically calcium hydroxide. Through this, carbon dioxide is bubbled, right? Now, when the carbon dioxide is bubbled, it turns milky. The lime water turns milky, right? Why this is turning milky? This is because of the presence of what? Because of the formation of calcium carbonate right so lime water turns milky because of the formation of calcium carbonate now this lime water which is uh, which is, has turned milky is allowed to stand for a while after then what will happen calcium carbonate being heavier will settle down at the bottom under the effect of under the influence of gravity Right? So this is this is your lime water, this is without carbon dioxide, and this is with carbon dioxide. This calcium carbonate will be settled down. After that, this solution which is obtained above it can be filtered. So once you have filtered, you can separate calcium carbonate from water. So this is carbon dioxide plus calcium hydroxide gives calcium carbonate plus water. How this uh, calcium carbonate can be uh, separated from the suspension of calcium carbonate in water by sedimentation and filtration. On doing, on uh, keeping it for a while, the calcium carbonate gets settled down at the bottom and the supernatant liquid can be filtered to get the clear water. Right? Let's take a few more examples. Separation of crystals of copper sulfate, nitre, potassium nitrate or potassium prepared by some suitable method. See, crystals can be separated. Sedimentation and decantation. That's it. A white precipitate of silver chloride formed by mixing the solution of silver nitrate and sodium chloride can be separated by filtration. See, silver nitrate, it's AgNO3. When treated with sodium chloride, NaCl, what it forms is sodium nitrate 
and silver chloride right this is silver nitrate this is sodium chloride this is sodium nitrate and this is silver chloride the silver chloride forms a white precipitate right now when this mixture is allowed to stand silver chloride precipitates so this can be separated silver chloride can be separated from the mixture by filtration there's another example of iron particles and sulfur say a mixture of iron and sulfur particles they can be separated by magnetic separation also that is using a magnet also if a magnet is used iron particles will be attracted towards it right but sulfur will not it can also be separated by sedimentation and filtration how see the mixture is dissolved in carbon disulfide solution solvent the carbon disulfide is an organic solvent solvent is what the one into which anything is dissolved so sulfur it is present in the mixture so it retains its property and it dissolves in carbon disulfide but iron doesn't dissolve in carbon disulfide so iron remains in the solution when this solution is filtered what will happen iron will remain in the filter paper and sulfur will come out with the carbon disulfide solution later on sulfur can be collected from the solution by evaporation see the mixture suppose here in the filter paper we are pouring the mixture of cs2 plus sulfur plus iron so sulfur dioxide will dissolve in it but iron will not so iron will be present as a residue and cs2 solution will pass through when it is evaporated we can collect the sulfur from here so this is how iron and sulfur can be separated right so this was a very very simple process that is sedimentation and filtration so in these cases what is happening the precipitates are formed in the suspension of calcium carbonate and water also the suspension the calcium carbonate gets suspended and it can be separated but there are solutions in which or there are mixtures where precipitates cannot be formed or where the components cannot be separated by the sedimentation and filtration they can be but the precipitates are not formed say for example milk milk contains large amount of dissolved fat so this fat cannot be separated from milk we you can't just keep the milk in the bowl for hours and the fat will be separated out it doesn't happen of course you can boil milk you'll get a, a thick cream uh, which is uh, formed over there but still all the fat is not separated likewise blood blood is also a mixture it consists of large number of blood cells the rbcs are there the wbcs are there the plasma is there now if i want to separate the constituents of blood into plasma into the blood cells into the wbcs i can't do it just by sedimentation and filtration i can't keep blood for uh, some time so that the um, this thing the cells are separated or sedimented the constituents from these mixtures can be separated by using centrifuge the centrifugal machines are there by using a centrifugal machine so it's nothing it's a simple machine in which milk is kept and it is rotated at a very high speed so you make a grinder you can use that also that is also a centrifugal machine that is you can keep uh, the uh, substance in that grinder and just uh, rotate it with a, at a high very high speed at a high speed say rotor or centrifugal machine they 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 rotate at a very very high speed washing machine it is also an example of a centrifugal machine let's discuss about this centrifugal machine now centrifugal machines help in the formation of precipitates in the mixture see this is a centrifugal machine this is uh, eppendorf centrifuge 
which is used for uh, separating the constituents of blood and also for medical purposes. In this sockets, the tubes are placed and it is rotated at a very high speed. When it is rotated at a very high speed, what happens? The particles present in the blood collide with each other. Blood or uh, uh, whatever sample is there, they collide with each other and they form aggregates. Right? The particles of similar type obviously will collide with each other. Because they are moving at a very, very high speed, these particles collide and they form the aggregates. And based upon their densities, they settle. So, I will show you this. These are the centrifuge tubes, right? This is the blood with some chemical added. Otherwise, blood will coagulate, right? Now, it is rotated at a very, very high speed. Then, post spin, what will happen? See, the upper one, the upper layer is formed of platelets and plasma. The second layer is PBMC, the, or more of the blood cells. This is fecal and other granules, and RBC settles down. So, settling takes place according to their densities. The one with higher density will settle down. So, these are the many particles or these are many different cells or particles which are present in the blood. This is a diluted blood. We, I can't keep this diluted blood with the chemical for long time so that the particles are separated. No. This tube is taken and this is kept in the Eppendorf centrifuge. And there, that is usually diagnostic centers. And he, then what happens? It is rotated at a very, very high speed. When it is rotated at a very, very high speed, say RBCs, they will all combine with each other and they will settle down. Then the granules are there, then these cells are there, then the platelets and plasma. And different layers are formed depending upon the densities. In this way, the constituents of blood can be separated. Similarly, the constituents of milk can also be separated by using a rotor. I will show you. Milk consists of a large quantity of soluble fat. Soluble fat and insoluble fat. Soluble fat means the fat which can be dissolved in milk. And insoluble which is not dissolved. So, milk which cannot be dissolved. Say, I, if I am putting in oil in milk, will that oil dissolve in milk? No. So, oil is an insoluble fat. Or if I am putting a uh, butter in milk, the butter will also not dissolve. It will just come up. But milk consists of large number of soluble fat. With the help of centrifugal machine, fat can be separated from milk as cream. Right? How it is done? Milk is placed in the machine which is rotated at a very high speed by passing current. The fat particles present, they will collide with each other. They will combine to form a bigger particle and they will form the precipitate. Now, fat particles, they will collide, they will form bigger ones and they will come up. Right? I will show you. See, here, this is the thing. Before, this is milk. This is rapidly rotating rotor. It is rotating. What will happen? The milk, the cream, whatever is present, the fat is present. Fat will form the aggregate. So, these are the fat aggregates. This will come up as cream. And the milk. Milk is separated from here. Right? In this way, your single toned and double toned milk are made. Or prepared. This is a very, very small machine. This is just to show you. But in uh, places where or say in the factories where these milk are, these, uh, this type of milk is prepared, single double toned milk is prepared, they contain huge, huge rotors. Right? And in this, there is a nozzle over here. The cream is collected above and the milk is allowed to flow. Again, this milk is subjected to centrifugation. Cream is again collected and milk is allowed to flow. So, for single toned, it will be done for once and double toned, it will be done for twice. So, that all the soluble fat present in the milk can be separated. So, what is the function of a centrifuge? Why? It is a, in a centrifuge, the mixture is rotated at a very, very high speed by passing electric current. Because it is rotating at high speed, the particles are, uh, say, 
aggravated. The particles, they move randomly. So, the like particles, they collide with each other and form the aggregates. And then they get settled depending upon their densities. The lighter will form the aggregate at the top layer and the heavier will be the bottom. I hope you have understood this uh, centrifuge. This is how the uh, liquids can be separated. The heterogeneous mixture in which liquid is one of the component can be separated. See, for separating the constituents or components of a heterogeneous mixture, magnets can be also used. That process is called as what? Magnetic separation. So, I will tell you about the magnetic separation and its example. Magnetic separation. Now, the mixture should contain, what should be the principle? That the mix, it should be a mixture of a of magnetic and non-magnetic, both the substances. Suppose these are the magnetic substances. And it should also have non-magnetic ones. Then only you can separate. The properties should be different. Then only you can separate. Again, there is an example of iron filings and sulfur. When it is present in a mixture, it can be separated with the help of horseshoe magnet. I will show you this picture. See in this, the sulfur powder and iron filings are present. Horseshoe magnet tip is there. What will this magnet do? This magnet will attract the iron filings and will leave sulfur powder as such. Is sulfur magnetic? No. Iron filings are magnetic. So what will this horseshoe magnet do? It will attract the iron filings. The mixture is placed in a dish and a magnet is repeatedly moved over the mixture. You have to just move the magnet over the mixture. The iron filings stick to the magnet in each operation and can be removed. See, this is a mixture. I have to just move the magnet over it. That's it. So, the magnetic particles will stick to the magnet. And every time that iron filings can be removed from the surface of the magnet. After some time, the entire iron filings present in the mixture will be removed, leaving behind sulfur, which is of non-magnetic nature. Magnetic, so magnetic separation is done for the mixture in which one of the component is magnet, magnetic in nature. Right? This is the way how separation is done. There are solutions where, say, there are components which directly undergo, which directly change from solid to the gaseous state. What are these called? Or what is this process called? The process in which a substance changes from a solid state directly to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state. That is called as sublimation. Have you seen camphor at your home? Camphor is used for uh, puja and all. Now that camphor, when it is left and open, it just vanishes off. That is, camphor changes from solid to gaseous state without changing to the liquid state. That process is called as sublimation. So, for certain mixtures, sublimation or sublimation can also be done. I will tell you its examples. The process, separation of substance undergoing sublimation from a mixture. The process of sublimation is used to separate those solids from their mixture which directly pass into the vapor state. That is solids directly passing to the vapor state without passing through the liquid state and the vapors on cooling change to the solid state again. Say camphor, I have uh, given you the example, this is suppose a camphor cube. Now if it is uh, left in air, it moves to its vapor state. But vapor we are not collecting anywhere so that we can cool it and change it to camphor cube again. 
what should be done for uh, collecting these substances the sublimates the vapor the vapor this vapor should be collected and it should be cooled let's take an example so if I have to separate substances like naphthalene, camphor, ammonium chloride, benzoic acid, iodine from the mixture which contains the non-volatile components also. Non-volatile means which cannot change into their vapor state. So a mixture of ammonium chloride and water. Water will be changed into the vapor state. So I can't take water over here. Anything other, carbon disulfide. So, a mixture of volatile and a non-volatile component. In this case, what is happening? Ammonium chloride is directly changing to its gaseous state. What is done is, see the mixture is taken in this container. It is heated and this is the perforated asbestos sheet. From this perforated as asbestos sheet, the ammonium chloride gases will be formed. Will be given out or will be escaped. Now that those gases are collected in this inverted funnel whose tip is covered with cotton. These gases are collected and then cooled. This is called as sublimate. If I want to separate a substance which undergoes sublimation from the non-volatile components, I can do this process. Right? Understood this process? It is very, very simple. In the process of separation, remember one thing that the mix, the constituents of mixture should have altogether different properties. Say, one, if one component is volatile, another is not. Then you can separate it by evaporation also. Say, if I, am, I have mixed in, I have taken salt and water. Water can be evaporated, water is volatile. It will form vapors. Whereas salt will not. The vapors can be collected and condensed. By sedimentation and decantation, the, there should be differences in their densities. Then only the sedimentation and decantation can work. By filtration, there should be differences in their sizes, in the size of the particles. Then only by filtration we can separate a mixture. By sublimation, that is, the component present should change from solid state to gaseous state directly without undergoing or without changing to the liquid state. Say, I can't separate camphor and ammonium chloride because they both undergo sublimation. They both have similar properties. So, I can't separate them. But I can separate ammonium chloride and carbon disulfide because ammonium chloride will be uh, given off as the vapor by sublimation, right? When the particles present in a mixture do not aggregate and form the precipitate, which machine is used? The centrifugal machine, right? Removal of butter from buttermilk is also based on centrifugation only. It is rotated at a very high speed so that the fat particles, they collide with each other and being lighter, they float above. So, these are the methods of separation of constituents of heterogeneous mixture. Now, I will be concluding this session, students. In the next session, we are going to discuss about the separation of constituents of homogeneous mixture. And we are also going to, uh, say, discuss about the separation of constituents of, uh, say, immiscible liquids. There are miscible liquids, there are immiscible liquids. How can we separate and uh, separate the two liquids which are, which are immiscible? Say, oil and water. I have to separate oil from water. How can I separate? We'll discuss about that also in the next session. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Just I'll uh, again say just go through the text so that the concepts are clear to you. Right? These are very easy concepts. You can see it, uh, these things at your home also. This is these are the the said that is sedimentation, filtration, and um, the centrifugation. These are all uh, done at your home also. 
say when you just uh, rotate the dirty clo clothes in uh, washing this is in washing solution whatever is used in a washing machine what happens the dirt particles with the uh, detergent particles they combine and they form the aggregates so that they can be separated when the cloth is rinsed it gets separated so the motive of see the uh, revolving or moving the particles at a very high speed in the machine is uh, for the is for the formation of aggregates of the particles so that they can be separated right so thank you students thank you for listening patiently and do have a nice time ahead